can go an hour and 41 minutes without eating. <laughs> Unless there's a donut involved, and then it goes down to about 27 minutes. There was a four-year-old boy that was uh, asked to give the blessing at Christmas family dinner, and everyone bowed their heads, and he began, and he started off by thanking God for, for all his friends, and he went on to name them one by one. And uh, then, he, then he thanked God for his parents, his mother, his father, his brother, his sister, his grandma, his grandpa on both sides, all the cousins. And, and, and then he, he went on to, to thank God for the food. He finally got around to thanking God for the food. And what he did was he started naming it one by one. He, Lord, I thank you for the turkey and the ham and the stuffing and the sweet potatoes and the corn pudding and the rolls. You get the idea. He was naming everything one by one. And he got to, he had named everything except for one item. There was just a pause. And he just stopped. His family waited. They waited. You know how it is when somebody's praying, there's a pause, you kind of start looking, you know, open up one eye. Yeah. And everybody was looking to see what the problem with it was. And, and, I, and the boy turned to his mom and he said, Mom, said, if I ask God to bless the broccoli, won't he know I'm lying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all got some broccoli in our life, don't we? <laughs> Not necessarily broccoli, broccoli, but we all got something in our life. You know, we're, we're kind of leery to, to give thanks for, right? That, that It may, you know, mm, don't know how to take that. Or, you know, I can't see where that's a blessing. Uh, but I feel like there's always a blessing in everything, even in illness. Uh, um, like, like my illness, I, I see things different. It's a blessing. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's inconvenient. It's an obstacle. You have obstacles in your life. Right? We all have some obstacles. Every day is a good day. We all have something to be thankful for. And, and today, we're going to be talking about one line in the uh, Lord's Prayer. Now, we have been, up to this point, talking about, if you remember, we've been talking about things that honor God. You know, we've been talking, recognizing that God is, what, all-powerful, that He is uh, in control, and, and that that most Importantly, He is our Father who loves us, right? Yep. That He is a loving God that loves His children, of which we all are. And that we should honor His name, right? That Hallowed be Thy name. That we should give Him the honor and the glory that He deserves for being our God, right? And that we seek for His kingdom to come and that His will be done. And we want to be a part of that, right? We want to do things that honor the kingdom, that honor God each and every day. We want to live our lives like that. We want to... We want to uh, make sure our words coincide with that. So when people encounter us, they're going to be able to see a glimpse of what God looks like. That love and that compassion, that understanding, that forgiveness, all those things that hopefully we represent when we go out in public. But today we turn the corner and we're asking about stuff for who? So for ourselves. For us, actually, for us. We're asking about stuff for us. It says, give us, give us, you see, give us our daily bread. Now, Pam asked an important question. You know, she said, how, how long can you go without bread? Some of you had to think. You said, well, how long is the sermon? <laughs> you know, um, but, but in all honesty, how long do, can we go without bread? And, and the thing is, is that bread doesn't necessarily mean bread. I mean, in some ways it does, but, but in a way, this is a petition for God to give us what we need to survive, right? We need bread to survive. We need things to survive. Now, not a wish list, not like saying, well, you know, I need a new car, a new house. It, that's, there's a difference between a need and a greed, right? So I, I got something, but I want something more. And God says, well, you already got something. So, you know, be patient. Wait your turn, you know. You might get that later on, or you may never get that. But you don't need to be, you know, worrying about that. You don't need to be worrying about that. But it's okay for us to ask. Don't let it be. But make sure you're asking for your need, not your grief, right? That we should always, whether we whether we have all we want or, or don't have all we want, we should always have an attitude of gratitude, right? 
We should always look at, remember years ago when I started here, that first, that first, first, uh, I think it was first November or first December, and I said, you know, we started this whole thing about, you know, as you go through life, make it your goal to what? Remember the, see the donut and not the oh. hole. So you still remember. <laughs> that made, you talk, anytime you preach donuts, people remember. <laughs> <laughs> But, but that's how our attitude should be. We should be grateful for what we have. To see the things that, that, we, that we do have, that God has blessed us with. And, you know, it may not be perfect in our lives. But it doesn't take far to look to find out that you really are blessed. Does it? You might have a 10-year-old car, and that may not seem like much to you, except for the guy who's walking on the side of the road because he don't have nothing. Then you realize, hey, God's blessed me. Hey, God's blessed. I think He's blessed each and every one of us. Um, and when we pray, you know, we, we need to kind of get into the attitude of gratitude. Tim Keller, who's a, a pastor in, in New York, he's gone through and done a great job. He wrote a book, and in that book it said, to pray is to accept that we are and always will be wholly dependent on God for everything. Do you believe that? Amen. You say, no, I get my own. Mm -hmm. How's that working for you? <laughs> yeah. We are totally dependent on God for everything. It means your clothes, your shoes, your car, your house. Everything that you have that you're dependent on God, God is, a, is the provi our provider, right? If he's not a provider, why would we go to him and why would we ask for our daily bread? Why would we go to him and petition him for, for things that we need in our life if you don't believe that God is the one who provides them for you? Right? right. I mean, he provides everything for you. Good. Sometimes not as what we need, but what we have. Right? Feel something right now. Don't you? <sighs> Breathe that in. You know what that is? That's, that's, that's oxygen. Yeah, he woke you up today. Amen. 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 He might have woke you up with some aches and some pains. He may have woke you up with the kids jumping on the bed. He may have woken you up a whole lot of different ways, but you know what? He woke you up. And in waking you up, he's given you the ability to breathe, which means you get another what? Day. You hope, hope it's a whole day. <laughs> but, but, but at least we're alive today in this hour, in this place, worshiping God. Agree? Agreed. Amen. And that in itself is a gift. It, I mean, there are places, that it, this is a beautiful church, it's an older church, and it, but it has character and it's a, beautiful, it's a beautiful place we come to worship. Some of you have worshiped here all your life. And some of you are newer to this church. But either way, it's a beautiful church. It's a great place to worship. If we look around the world, there are, there are a lot of people who, who worship under a, a tarp or a tin roof with no walls. Even when it rains and even when it floods, they come and they gather and they're grateful. You'd be there. That's terrible. You know, I can't. I'll stay at home. You know, but they're grateful to have a place to worship and they worship hard. You see, that's an attitude of gratitude. And that's what we're reminded to keep, regardless of our situation. You know, uh, I don't know if you can remember the uh, uh, Hamilton Jordan. He was the chief of staff under Jimmy Carter way back. But he wrote a book that says, No Such Thing as a Bad Day. There's no such thing as a bad day. And in his book, he, he had, by the time he was 50, he'd been diagnosed with cancer three times. And, you know, you get to know, when you're in those situations, you get to know other people who... Have, get that, that disease, right? So sometimes it's children, which is like really hard. But but you get to know people who, who have that disease, and sometimes you compare notes and you 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 uh, but you keep in touch. And he called this guy, this friend of his, and he said they talk and they exchange, you know, uh, uh, pleasantries. I'm sorry, pleasantries. You know, how you do when you call somebody and you're talking. And, and no, it wasn't too long. He said he said, how are you today? How's your day going? He said, it's good. He said, there's, he said, when you know the doctor gives you uh, 30 days to live, there isn't a bad day. He said, I don't have time to have a bad day. 
He said, I got maybe 30 days left, and I need to make the most of it. And isn't that the truth that, that when you have 30 days to live, you have a couple choices. You can go pout, you can go sit in the corner and feel sorry for yourself. Not that you don't have something to feel sorry for yourself, and not that you don't have something to pout about. Or I've, I've never been there, but I imagine I'm going to make the most of every day. Every second, every minute, I want to make it as best I can. And people who are have given, people who have a terminal uh, disease or something like that, told to them that you have 30 days, or you have three months, or you have 20 days, whatever that is, I think they, they for the most part, they want to make the best of those days. Don't they? A lot of times people have a, have a, a terminal illness and they won't even tell their kids, or they won't tell their grandkids. You know why? Because they don't want to spend any time being somebody feeling sorry for them. So they don't tell them until it's just you can't you can't hide it anymore. They want to go out and they want to live and they want them to see them happy and see them, you know, moving and, and experience life with it. They don't want to spend time, you know, people feeling sorry for them. People, you know, saying, Oh, I'm so sorry, and oh, I'm this, so this. I mean, they want to live their life. Now the question is, they know they can't have a bad day. They don't have time for it. But how often do we allow ourselves to have a bad day? Why do we have bad days? Why do we spend time sulking or, or you know, why, why, or getting mad? Or, why, do we, why do we entertain those days? Because we think, you know, we're going to die this way down the road, right? That's not something for today. I'm not worried about dying anywhere in the next week. Or, you know, or month or, or year or maybe, you know, four or five years it would be that time, but not today. And we think we have plenty of time, so we have plenty of time to waste. But you don't have plenty of time to waste because you don't know when your day's up. It could be in the next five minutes. I hope not. But it could be. And so you should live each day as though it can't be a bad day. As though i got to make the most of whatever God has given me. Does that make sense? That we should be thankful for the things that we ask for. Sometimes we get things that we've prayed for and we don't even go back and thank God. You know, we're just so happy to get them and then we forget we've prayed about them for the last 30 days and we're like, all right, I got it now. Next on the list. Behind door number two is this right here. You know, and, and we forget to go back to God and say, thank you, God. I know I, know I asked for this 30 days ago or for the last 30 days and and your timing is perfect, and this must be the perfect time for you to allow me to have that. Whatever that is, we forget to go back and say thank you. No, we forget to have an attitude of gratitude. Because attitude of gratitude is what we're called to every single day. Because I think if you're grateful for something, if you're grateful for something every day, it's in your mind, isn't it? That you, you're, you think of God as your great provider, and you're thankful. Regardless of what that is. And it makes you take time to realize how blessed you are. Are you blessed? Yes. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I agree with you 100%. I think everybody in here is blessed. You may not feel like totally blessed today, but you're blessed. Amen? You may have, that doesn't mean you don't have any problems. Because Jesus told us, you're going to have problems. You're going to have problems in this world. Times are going to get tough. Some of you have been in tough times. Some of you are going into tough times. You know, some of you are sitting here in tough times. But there's hope, right? There's hope because we worship a God that loves us, that honors you as His children, that will be sitting there to welcome you home when your time comes. So there's hope, right? Amen. We all have hope. Or we should if we don't. Because of we come to God, we should always be, be thankful first off. Thank you for what you've given me. I love you, God. You're my Father in Heaven. I realize that, that, you know, that you've given me everything I need. And I just want to thank you. How many of you pray when you go out to eat? How many of you are ashamed to pray when you go out to eat? How many of you just don't think about it? Sometimes you just don't think about it. Sometimes i got to remind Pam. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I'm not picking on Pam. But, and it's all good because I'll, I'll thank God for the food he's given us and the food Pam's chewing. 
and, and we just go on. And, and, and it's gotten to be almost a, a joke sometimes. You'll be looking at me like. But really, sometimes we get busy in our thoughts and we forget. But, you know, it's important that we give thanks even for the food we go out to eat. There's a story, uh, there's a story, uh, um, I was trying to think of the, the gentleman's name, Dr. Dr. Harry Ironside, and he told the story of, he went out to eat one day in the cafeteria and it was so crowded that uh, he had to sit across from this man. And as he sat down to eat, he bowed his head and prayed. And, you know, he prayed for a little while and, and he got his head up. All the time this guy's just staring at him, he said, he said, uh, did, you, did you lose something? He said, no, sir, I didn't lose anything. Are you all right? Yes, sir, I'm fine. I'm fine, thanks for asking. He said, well, what were you doing then? He said, I was praying. I was giving thanks for my food. I was just giving God thanks for my food. He said, I don't do that. <laughs> he, said, he said, well, why do I don't believe in all that? If you, you believe in all that? You think there's a God that provides? I don't believe in that. He said, you believe in that? He said, yes, sir, I do. He said, I do believe in that. That's why every time I sit down to eat, I give thanks. I give thanks for what God's given me. And I said, no, nah, I don't do that. I just go for it. I just dive in and eat. I, just, I get to sit down and I, I just, just go for it. He said, Dr. I said, yeah, I could see that. He said, uh, he said, you know what that makes you? That makes you equal to my dog. Because you know what? When I put his food down, he don't stop to pray either. He just goes for it. <laughs> and you know, we got to consider ourselves that we're, we're greater than the dog, I hope. Although some dogs are family. But we're greater than our spirituality, I hope, is greater than the dog. And that we do take time to recognize that what God's given us, He's given us and we should be thankful for it, right? No matter where you're at or what, what you're up to, right? We should just go for it, yes. right? I know you get hungry or hangry, but you shouldn't just go for it. You shouldn't just go for it. You should spend time being thankful to God for what He's what He's given you. And that's that's an important part of what we do each and every day. Each and every day, we need to make sure that God knows that, that we know He's responsible for our daily bread. So when we come to Him and we say, give us, Lord, our daily bread, it's a shot sign of not only reverence to Him, but acknowledgement that all that we have is His blessing. That He has blessed us, He's blessed us to live in this country, whether you believe that or not, this is a great country. It's a good country. It may not be everything you want it to be, but unless you've seen other countries and how people live, you can't truly appreciate what goes on in this country. Okay, so very, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to get into politics, the, uh, which is best, always best. But um, in truth, we live in a great country. We don't walk anywhere for water. You turn on a spigot. The water's right there. We don't go to bed at 5 o'clock at night because there's no light. There's not much else to do. So we just wait for the roosters to grow. And then we start our day. And most of our day is just about survival. Not getting the extras. Just survive. Finding food and doing. So when I say you're blessed to be in this country, I truly believe you are. I believe I am. But I'm more blessed to be a, a son of God. A God that provides for me. A God that provides for you. You see, it says, give us Give us. It doesn't say anything about give me. It says give us. And that should be a reminder to you in this prayer. It says give us. It means we're all in this together. We're all in this together. You know, this world that spins round and round, revolves around the sun, places all over this world, there are Christians. And we're all in this together. And it's through us that a difference can be made. Right? Even the little country churches, and you hear, you know, you talk about the district and there's some churches that are closing and they've just gotten so small that they can't support themselves. And that's sad to me. It's sad to me that churches are closing. 
because I think it's a bad reflection of our society. That what used to be important to us isn't as important to us anymore. That our faith and our beliefs have gotten pushed to the back burner to where it's not important to attend church, it's not important to bring kids to church, it's not important to come into worship. And I don't care if you worship at home. That's okay too. I think you miss something by not being at church, but most importantly, worship wherever you're at. If you're on vacation, take time to read the Bible, worship, pray. It's important. Let it be a priority in your life, not an afterthought. Right? Because God didn't, didn't treat you as an afterthought. He loves you. He adores you. And we should love Him. We should adore Him. We should build that relationship with Him. And we should rest in the assurance that He will provide for us what we need today. He didn't say tomorrow. He said today. Give us our bread, daily bread, our daily bread. Didn't say, you know, when the Israelites were out in the desert, did he give them a whole, no, he gave it to them one day at a time. You know, because I think that's important for us to realize. We take one day at a time. Doesn't mean you can't plan for the future or work towards the future, but you shouldn't worry about the future. You should take one day at a time. But they say, today's got enough worries of its own, right? But but you shouldn't worry about tomorrow. Take care of today. So he gives us enough daily bread for the day. So that means we're going to have to come back to him <coughs> tomorrow, right? And the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that, and I can go on for the rest of the sermon, that we'll always have to come back to him. Because he is the great provider. And some of you are saying, no, I got what I need by myself. Did you? Did you? Did God bless you with the help to go to work every day? <clears throat> Didn't he? Did he bless you with an education? Or at least some of an education? Or at least the common sense to do what's right? Did he bless you with that? He blessed us all with that stuff. We can go on and on and on about the blessings. But what's more important than the blessings is knowing that you have a God that loves you. And the God that will provide for you each and every day. <coughs> and yes, some days it's going to come in the form of broccoli. <laughs> and we still need to be thankful for the broccoli. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.